Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Bedtime Stories. Yes, it's that time again where we will read just before we doze off and go to sleep. Now, have you brushed your teeth? Are you ready? Yes, let's get started. So I've selected a few books today. I've got two here. I will never ever eat a tomato and mine. Also, I have a tiger tail and the best gift of all. Now, I think we read this one, didn't we? But it's so nice and so interesting. I thought we could read it again. If you liked it, I'll read it again. So this week, I have chosen to read A Tiger Tale by Holly Webb. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. And now let's get started for bedtime stories. A Tiger Tale. <clears throat> I just keep thinking about him. Kate's mum smiled. The silliest thing like him always complaining that the tea wasn't strong enough. Auntie Lynn let out a laughter. Dad only drank tea if it was strong enough to take the paint off the mug. Who knows what that did to his inside? He must have had a cast iron stomach. Kate listened to them talking overhead and blinked worriedly. Was that, was that what happened? All those mugs of tea must have done something awful to Grandad's stomach. But Mum and Aunt Lynn were laughing, so it couldn't be true. She wanted to join in, to say that Grandad was brilliant at dunking biscuits and his biscuits never fell apart in the tea. Ever. He even let Kate dunk her biscuits in them too. But she always whipped them out again after a couple of seconds, just in case they crumbled. And actually, because she didn't even like tea, she only did it for Grandad. She wanted to say it. But how could she? She couldn't find the words. It wouldn't come out of her mouth. She just stayed sitting silently on the sofa between Mum and Auntie Lynn, listening to all those stories her dad was telling them and Mrs Eversley, Grandad's friends from down the road and a couple of people, relatives, who'd come to the funeral. Mum had told Kate who they were, but there were so many people around and she just couldn't remember them all. Grandad wearing odd shoes to the supermarket, Grandad flying a kite with Kate in the park. Everyone looked at her and Dad and said, but Kate still couldn't say anything. Everyone was sharing stories about Grandad. Grandad taking ages to walk down the street in sunny days because he had to stop and say hello to the sunbathing cats. That made Kate smile. It was so true. He'd nearly made her and Molly late for school. A few weeks back, the black cat from the house on the corner on the corner of the road rolled on the dusty pavement and then followed them down the street. They had to stop and shoo it home just in case it tried to cross the road. Kate smiled and then bit her bottom lip hard to make herself stop. She mustn't smile. Grandad was dead. 
How could she be happy? She didn't understand how everyone could tell stories and laugh. Her words were building up inside her. All the things she wanted to say. Too much. But she couldn't. They hurt deep inside her. Deep inside her chest. And then she bit her lip more. Grandad had walked them to school every day and usually he picked them up again too. That was making Kate feel even worse. What would happen after Easter holidays? When they went back to school, who would pick them up now? Kate sank her chin down under. Her eyes were aching, she was crying. <clears throat> she supposed it was mean to be worrying about who was going to be taking them to school and back. It seemed selfish, but she couldn't help thinking about it. Grandad had always been there, and now he wasn't. Until a week ago, he lived in a little flat that used to be the garage at the side of Kate's house. He'd been there for four years, half as long as Kate has been there. And even before that, he'd lived close by. In that house he shared with Kate's gran, five minutes walk away. Kate didn't remember gran much, as she had died when Kate was only a little baby. Grandad had been lonely on his own. Grandad had been living there next to Kate. Now Kate felt it too. Grandad had cooked tea sometimes if mum and dad work really late. He made brilliant cheese on toast. Who likes cheese on toast? That's one of my favourites. Which was really lucky because it was all he ever made. That and toffee. But Kate didn't mind. They were two of her favourite things. The voices went on murmuring over her. And still her stories were locked away inside her. Kate felt as though she couldn't stand it any longer. She wriggled out from between her mum and Auntie Lynn and threaded her way through everyone's legs, turning away from listening to Mrs. Everly's for a moment. Hmm. Just going upstairs for a bit. <clears throat> Molly's upstairs too, her mum suggested. You could go and sit with her. Molly's upstairs too. Kate nodded, but she knew that she wouldn't. Molly's bedroom door would be tight shut, and if Kate interrupted her, she'd probably get yelled at. She climbed the stairs wearily, wondering what to do. She was tired, but it was too early to go to bed. It was only six o'clock. On a usual day, mum and dad would just be going home from work. Kate would have been pottering around in the garden with granddad, sitting at the kitchen table, doing her homework or drawing. She stopped on the top of the stairs, sniffing. Molly's door was shut and there was a notice on the door that said, Go away, <clears throat> in very large black letters. And underneath, in smaller ink letters, it said, this means you. There was no point in me even asking if I could sit with my sister. But as Kate pushed her door, as Kate pushed her own bedroom door, the next, that was next to Molly's, she already knew she couldn't stay in there either. Her room was full of things, 
like her jewellery kit and a book of disgusting science experiments. But Grandad had bought her that. He'd promised to help her with it. And her fingers felt too tired and sausage-like for threading beads today. She jumped as Molly's bedroom door opened very suddenly and her sister glared out. Red-eyed grumpy. What do you want? Why are you just standing there? I'm not, Kate said at once, even though she was. I'm standing in my room. Go away. She, she took a small step further into her room to make it true, and Molly sighed huffly and whisked back. Kate heard the bedspring wheeze as Molly flung herself down. Kate stood in the doorway and sighed at her room. Usually she loved to curl up on the scruffy old armchair by the window, even if she was in a bad mood or if she had a fight with Molly. The, fl the faded plush fabric and musty smell made her feel better, but today it wasn't enough. But there was a striped, droopy, whiskered face squashed between the cushions. Kate picked up Amos and hugged him tight. He was saggy and his fur stuck up like old spikes from being squashed under Kate's chin when she was asleep. But he still looked proud and brave and wise like a real tiger. It was silly, Kate thought, sniffing again, that Amos could make her feel so much better, so much worse at the same time. He always made her happy because he was her favourite cat. Her best and most special thing, her favourite toy. He even looked like Grandad. Two years ago, he, <clears throat> two years ago, his eyes peered out from under his eyebrows just like that. The last time she'd seen him, they'd been in the shed. Grandad humming to himself and looking at his seed catalogue. And Kate sitting next to him writing. Another story about a brave, fierce princess with her pet tiger. She had been writing for months in episodes and with pictures too. Grandad had read Kate's story and twitched, his eyebrows at all at its best. She would go to the shed, Kate decided, brushing Amos, Amos's furry eyebrows against her cheek. She could even look at the seed catalogue. She loved them so much. The pictures of the flowers were nice enough, but the names were brilliant. Most of the character names had come from Grandad's catalogue. Her princess was called Gloricia, Glory for short, and the evil witch who kept trying to steal Amos was called Scabossa. Scabossa were really actually pretty flowers, like fluffy little pom-poms, but they sounded warped, encrusted and witch-like. Where are you going? Molly growled as Kate passed her door again. Downstairs. It was true, even if it wasn't planning to stay. Why have you got that ratty toy tiger? You're eight, not four. You're too big to be carrying around toys. <coughs> Kate stared back at Molly, wondering why she had to be so mean. Molly had toys as well, a whole shelf full of dolls that she swore she didn't play with. But she still wouldn't give them to Mum to take to the charity shop. And they weren't dusty either, like things that never got touched. 
Kate knew that Molly brushed their hair and held them, but only when she was sure no one would see her. Maybe when she was ten, she wouldn't want Amos, Kate thought, and tears burned her eyes again. She didn't want to be that old. That's horrible. You look like a baby, Molly snapped, propping herself up on her elbow and glaring at Kate. Oh, stop crying. You ought to throw that silly old thing away. She wriggled upright, reaching out as though she was to snatch Amos, and Kate darted away with a frightening squeak. No! Kate ran down the stairs in a rush. She'd meant to creep down step by step to make sure her mum and dad didn't hear her. She didn't want to explain why she was going outside. Kate had a feeling that mum would say sitting in Grandad's shed was silly or wrong or somehow she couldn't see why. It was just like telling stories about him except she wanted to be in the story instead with all the things that reminded her of Grandad. <clears throat> no one heard her even though she's forgotten to tiptoe, they were too busy talking. Kate hurried past the living room door into the kitchen. Then she peered through the back. It looked brighter than the house. Outside was more sunny and less people. Kate had to be polite in the house because there was lots of people inside. The sun was low and golden, and Kate could smell the wallflowers that Grandad had planted along the path that she would walk down. There were bees bumbling slowly. <clears throat> she loved the way zigzagged. She loved the way they zigzagged about, as though nothing mattered. But the honey sweet smell. Did bumblebees even look where they were going, she wondered. What would happen if they crashed into each other? What would happen? Bumblebees were particularly all whiskers and fluff, so perhaps they could feel each other coming. And even if they did crash, Kate thought, as she went down the path, it would be like bumper cars. They'd just bounce off each other. Grandad had told her that cats used their whiskers to measure if they could get through the hole without getting stuck. Cats are very clever. If their whiskers went through, he said the rest of them would. Apply a fat ginger, the cat next door, but no one. He had average side whiskers, but the rest of him was enormous. Even his tail was fat, but then Molly had pointed out that she couldn't see Fat Ginger making the effort to try getting through a hole anyway, unless there was a great big hole of food on the other side. The shed door cracked as she opened it, and Kate looked up a can of WD-40 on the shelf. Grandad put it on the hinges when they squeaked and Kate always reminded him when it needed doing. Just for a second, she turned around and looked up, for, looked up at the following her down the path to see if she'd noticed. But he wasn't there, of course. She was looking for Grandad. That was the point. Kate gulped and swallowed a few times, trying to get past a strange feeling she had in her throat. Was it all right just to spray the stuff on the door herself? She had promised never to touch the tools or the bottles and jars and in the shed without Grandad's help. But everything had changed now. Mum and Dad wouldn't remember the squeaky door. 
So that was A Tiger Tale by Holly Webb. And that's all we've got time for today. I really hope you enjoyed the story. This story is quite touching because the story tells us about the girl's granddad who passed away and she's not very happy, is she? She's missing him so much that she can't concentrate, she can't explain herself. How many of us have lost somebody that we really love in our family and we're so close to but we can't really express ourselves? So in this story, the little girl is really sad, isn't she? And she can't seem to express herself, her feelings, but it's okay to be sad. Inshallah, I will see you again soon. And I hope you enjoyed the story today. And don't forget to brush your teeth before bed. See you again soon. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum.